Get in my ball. I don't want to. I said, get in my ball. Jesus Christ, what is that? Fine, yeah, just open it up, I guess. Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ages, you want more pals, right? I mean, we all do. It's a core component of this game. And aside from breeding them or buying them, the main way that you can get more pals is by heading into the field and capturing them, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps, getting yourself in gear, and putting those cute little monstrosities into some spheres. With this being such a major mechanic of the game, it may seem like a simpler thing to understand. And sure, at a base level, it is. Throw a sphere, catch pal. Except sometimes, you don't. And the reason for that is a whole bevy of complex calculations going on behind the curtains of the game itself. So today we're going to dive into what those are, the things that affect your capture chances, and essentially just how to boost your chances of catching a pal as much as physically possible with the resources that you have. Giving yourself the greatest chances at the things that you want with the least resource cost as well, ideally. And to do this, we are going to sort of work through this backwards in a way, and start at the final point of contact, which is the pal sphere connecting to the pal. And it's worth noting that the percentages that you see on the screen when throwing the sphere apply to each stage of the catch actively, so those numbers changing is on purpose. With the number that you see before the throw being the chance of it going in the ball to begin with, the number after they go in being the percentage chance of it not breaking out for the first shake, so on and so forth until you see 100% on screen, which reflects that the catch is now complete. Past that, there is, more specifically, which pal spheres that you choose to use. Every type of sphere in the game has a capture power stat number on it. A lot of people falsely believe that your capture chance with each sphere type is only actually effective on a certain range of levels, but the more accurate way to phrase this is that each sphere has a progressively higher base capture power stat, and higher level pals have a higher capture defense number, by which I mean the number that will go against your capture power, with the calculation essentially being capture power of sphere plus any bonuses you get from the other things we'll be covering in this video, then that capture power is pitted against a specific pal's capture defense, and that's what decides the actual capture rate percentage in any given scenario. That said, the base pal sphere has a capture power of 7, megaspheres have 14, gigaspheres have 20, hyperspheres have 26, ultraspheres have 32, and legendary spheres have a capture power number of 37. To put that in sort of simpler context, the megasphere is twice as good as the base pal sphere, the gigasphere is a 50% increase from mega, hyper is about a 26% increase over giga, ultra is about a 19% increase over hyper, and then legendary is about a 14% increase over ultra. So realistically, the actual gain from sphere to sphere diminishes pretty significantly. So let's also talk about why that matters and why this means that you don't actually want to always use use the best kind of spheres that are available to you. The main reason for that is production costs. Pal spheres are cheap as hell. Mega spheres are where they start to cost ingots, but the gain in effectiveness is massive. Once you get up to the hyper spheres, you start to actually cost some mint, and that's when it gets a lot more messy to actually farm them up, which means that there's a sweet spot. Of course, if you are resource rich and care only about time and nothing else, always use legendary spheres all the time. They have the highest chance, that's how it is. And so if you have them, you might as well use them. Aside from that though, I recommend all Always having a nice supply of gigaspheres just because they hit a really nice mid-game spot where they don't cost cement, which is really important, but they still gain a lot of capture power over the base spheres, so they're actually worth collecting. And then the third type worth crafting are base pal spheres. Base spheres are absolutely dirt cheap to make, and while they have the lowest capture power by a fair margin, they still do have capture power. And if you injure a pal enough, if you apply the other tips we'll go through in a moment, you reduce the capture power that is required to actually catch a pal, which means that even the base pal sphere does have a small chance of catching a really high tier pal. And at that point, it just becomes a numbers game. If it takes 100 pal spheres to catch a level 45 pal, but pal spheres are 1 100th the cost of legendary spheres, and it would take two legendary spheres to do the same, then you're technically better off throwing the 100 base pal spheres that it would take, provided that you're willing to, you know, take the time it would take to throw a hundred spheres and get a hundred chances at it. The main caveat to all of that though, of course, is the existence of Vixie. Vixie produced pal spheres for free at the ranch and at partner skill level four and five from using the condenser. Vixie will actually start producing full on mega spheres for free, which again have twice the capture power of base spheres. Therefore, if you set up a specific Vixie focused ranch with a bunch of them at partner skill five, you can get yourself a really hefty collection of mega spheres very frequently, absolutely free. At which point those will be your go-to cheap ones unless you actively want to spend resources to save some time. With that covered then, let's keep moving backwards to the next point of contact, which is the pal that the sphere connects with. As we already mentioned, depending on level, pals will have a different capture defense stat that you are trying to overcome to boost your chances. This is mostly defined by the pal's level, but there are also 
secondary factors, as if it is an alpha pal, a legendary, or a lucky pal, all of those will increase the capture defense of the pal over its default rates of the same species at the same level. Also worth noting, just for fun, that for whatever reason, some pals actually have slightly different capture rate multipliers, with pal deck entry 1, 2, and 3, which are Lambal, Kativa, and Chicopee, just having a 1.5 times capture chance multiplier on them as a whole to actually make it easier to catch those three specifically because they're the most common ones in the absolute beginner locations. On the flip side of this, there are a few notable ways to actually lower the capture defense of a pal, which in turn will raise your own capture percentages. The first and most obvious one is health. As a pal's health goes down, so does its capture defense. There is no real hard limit to this either. You can squeak out an extra percent or two from bringing a pal even from 10% health down to 1% health, so the lower that you can get them, the higher your chances are, literally down to them having one HP remaining. That said, 10% HP seems to be the sweet spot where it gains diminishing returns and only helps a little bit to lower them the last few bits of HP. Aside from that, you also have to consider the angle that the ball hits the pal at. If you hit a pal in the back with a sphere, you get what is called a back bonus, though this only applies if the pal is not in combat with you, if they are unaware of you, or if they're running from you. There's other bonuses that I do have confirmed though, and these are the different statuses that you can apply to pals. There is burning, which is applied through fire damage, poisoned, which is applied through dark attacks, shocked, which is applied through electric attacks, and frozen, which is applied through ice attacks. All of these different statuses seem to increase your capture power stat by around 10-15%, to 15 and the fun part is that these actually stack together, so if you can get a pal to be poisoned burning, shocked, and frozen at the, all at the same time, somehow by some miracle of overlaps, you will actually get an absolutely massive multiplicative capture chance bonus, because they are all active at the same time. A fun way to take advantage of this that sadly no longer works on alpha pals are campfires, which you can make pals walk over passively after building them just in the wild, catching themselves on fire without getting angry at you in particular, which then lets you overlap back bonus and burning bonus. And as far as applying these statuses without the use of specific pals, you can use the poison bow or crossbow to apply poison to enemies, the fire bow or crossbow to apply burning to enemies, and the stun baton to apply shocked. Then finally, let's go back to that initial point of contact, which is the player who threw the sphere. On top of all these other factors, each player actually has their own capture rate too, defined by the leaf monk effigies that you spend at a statue of power. This has had some buggy issues since launch of early access, but as it currently stands, this does increase your capture power as you level it up. We don't know the exact rates because, again, this has been changing quite a bit, at least in the way that it looks in the interface, but we do know that it is actually working in general in the first place, with players reporting increases across the board. The actual effect of this doesn't seem to be too massive though, it's far less of a bonus than you get from, say, lowering the HP of your target, it's far less than upgrading to better PAL spheres, but it is a bonus that applies always, regardless of the sphere that you use, and it seems to be a flat bonus too, which means that it actually has more relative impact when using lower grades of PAL spheres than using something like the legendary spheres, which again, leans our earlier calculations more towards it being better to use lots of weaker spheres, rather than just a couple of resource gobbling high tier spheres. Just an interesting note on that, really. Then finally, finally, if you want to get really technical, there is a point of contact even further back than the player, which is the settings of the world that you are in. You can, in the world settings for your game, set capture rate up to just be permanently double what it is by default. This is entirely a personal choice, and obviously you can't do this on dedicated servers but given the topic, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least bring it up for the solo players and the people that just play with their friends. So to sum it all up, for the absolute maximum capture power chance possible, you want to raise your own capture power with Leaf Monk Effigies. You want to use higher rarity of PAL spheres for highest chance per throw, but there's a much better sweet spot around Megaspheres and Gigaspheres where they cost far less resources to make, but comparatively have quite high capture chance. So using loads of these without actually having to use cement is technically... Cement is technically much better than just a few of the better spheres. Your chances are raised depending on how low the HP of your target is, as well as if it has any status conditions, and if it has multiple status conditions, those bonuses will stack. As well, if a pal is not actively in combat with you, and you throw the sphere at its back, you get a pretty hefty multiplier on your capture power too. And that just about does it for today then everyone, just a quick but comprehensive guide on the concept of how to maximize your ability to capture any given pal in the game a lot easier than you would otherwise be able to. Hopefully this has helped you all out, and if you have any other tips to help out other players in the community, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye <laughs>